All right, so today we are putting the Intel Arc A750 against the NVIDIA GeForce RTX 3060. Now, I would ask you guys to pause here because this will probably answer a lot of your questions that you guys usually have in the comments section. But I just want to point out that we are using the latest graphics drivers for both of these GPUs. All right, let's start with Cyberpunk at 1080p high. So what I've done here is I've just uh, selected the high preset, but then I manually disabled any upscaling that gets applied automatically when using a preset. And yes, you can see that these GPUs perform pretty much identical. The Arc does use slightly more power and it also runs at around 500 megahertz higher core clocks and this is a perfect example of why you can't compare core clocks between different vendors or even different architectures as the Intel should then be around 20% faster which obviously it isn't. The power draw is still pretty much the same slightly higher on the Intel but the averages and the 1% lows are pretty identical you won't notice any difference between either of these GPUs in your system. The frame time graph is a little bit more erratic on the Arc GPU and uh, it does result in slightly lower 0.1% lows but once again playing the game you probably won't even notice this all right so moving on to ray tracing once again i've selected the rt medium preset and then i just disabled any upscaling that gets applied by using a preset and i was pretty stunned by this uh, outcome you can see that the averages and the one percent lows at the end are identical there's going to be a slight difference in the 0.1 percent lows uh, spoiler alert but this is a very good result for the intel arc gpu I mean, neither of these are actually what I'd call playable, but for the Arc GPU to match a second gen RT cores from NVIDIA in a game like Cyberpunk, I think it's pretty impressive seeing it's their first try at a DGPU and also their first try at ray tracing. So all in all, a very decent result here. Once again, definitely not playable. This is just used for comparison, but I did find it extremely strange that the averages and the 1% lows are identical between different GPU vendors. All right, so now we'll have a look at upscaling included. And on the RTX 3060 side, I've used DLSS. And on the Intel side, I've used XSS. The quality mode is enabled here. Now you can't compare different upscaling tech to each other. I just wanted to show what would happen if you would use the dedicated upscaling tech from each vendor. So DLSS is obviously proprietary to Nvidia. XSS is Intel's upscaler and even though it does work better on Intel GPUs in some games it's not exclusive to Intel you can actually enable it on different GPUs as well but here you can see that with the DLSS or upscaling enabled the RTX 3060 edges are slightly ahead but once again you won't notice any difference when actually playing the game between these two GPUs but neither of them is capable of giving us a solid 60 frames per second experience once we actually enable ray tracing. All right, so we're going to move on to the next game, which is Dying Light 2. And here you can see that the Intel GPU is around 12% faster than the RTX 3060. So not a big difference, but there is definitely a noticeable difference. Now this is in-game footage. This is once again just a certain area that I'm testing. I'm not saying that you'll get these exact frame rates actually in game where there's a lot more going on. It's just a good scene to compare GPUs and that's exactly what we are doing here. The same goes for the in-game benchmark. That's not representative of actual gameplay, but it's just very good to use in comparisons. Moving on to ray tracing, all I've done is I've selected the high preset, then I've enabled all ray traced options in the game and I made sure that upscanning is disabled. And once again, the Intel Arc GPU is slightly faster, but this comes as a surprise as it's actually faster in ray tracing, right? I personally expected the RTX 360 to win in this particular test, but uh, I was pleasantly surprised. It means that whatever Intel is doing on their driver side is uh, definitely working, as we had about a 20% higher frame rate on the Intel Arc GPU. Once again, those uh, numbers aren't really playable, so let's enable uh, upscaling and see what happens. And once again, the Intel Arc GPU pulls ahead of the RTX 3060. Now, once again, I was slightly surprised, but uh, you can see here that the RTX 3060 is actually struggling to maintain 60 frames per second. It dipped into the mid 50s there for a, a few seconds, whereas the Intel Arc GPU maintained a 60 frames per second at all times. 
So once again, a pretty good result for the Intel Arc GPU. All right, so moving on to the unoptimized mess that is Hogwarts Legacy, or at least it was a complete mess when it launched. There has been quite a few patches since then, but I haven't played this game in a month or three, so I'm not entirely sure whether the patches actually helped. But just looking at these results once again, these GPUs are pretty much tied. The 3060, however, was able to maintain uh, 60 frames per second, a lot more than the Arc GPU, but they both dipped below 60 frames per second on this preset. So once again, not much between the two of them. And you would probably need to enable upscaling or run the game at medium to maintain a solid 60 frames per second. All right, so now we get to the ray tracing results once again. This is just with the ray tracing enabled on all settings and then the ray tracing quality is set to medium and uh, once again the results are identical which is uh, similar to what we've seen in a Cyberpunk which is pretty strange to me. I've never seen this before and I've been testing GPUs for quite a while. I haven't seen two different GPUs from two completely different manufacturers performing exactly the same when it comes to the averages and the 1% lows unless they are heavily limited by the CPU. But that's not the case here as the GPU usage is in the high 90s all the time. All right, so to be able to get a 60 frames per second experience, I've just enabled uh, DLSS and XSS on the balance, the preset. Now we aren't getting a full constant 60 frames per second at all times, but you can see once again, not much between these two GPUs. The 3060 does pull slightly ahead once we start using upscaling, which might indicate that uh, DLSS does work slightly better than XSS at these uh, settings, or it could just be run to run uh, variances as the, the differences are very small. All in all, not a bad result for either of these GPUs. We were able to maintain 60 frames per second with ray tracing enabled, but uh, we had to use the balanced preset when it comes to upscaling, which is definitely not ideal. All right, moving on to the Witcher 3 next gen. This is in DX12 mode. I don't think you can select the mode anymore. Not that I could see anyway, doesn't really matter. Yeah, the Intel Arc GPU is once again around 10 to 15% faster than the 3060. Both actually scored respectable results here as both GPUs were able to maintain 60 frames per second. This is a pretty demanding area, maybe not as demanding as Novigrad or one of the bigger cities, but in the larger cities, we do become CPU bound in some areas. So I just wanted to avoid that and just focus on GPU performance. All right, so here we have ray tracing performance at native. Once again, I just uh, selected all the ray tracing options and then I just selected uh, RTGI on the performance mode. And here you can see neither of these GPUs are actually able to get close to 60 frames per second even, but the Arc GPU once again pulls ahead of the 3060 here. Once again, not something that I really expected. The differences are pretty small here though, around uh, 10 to 15%, but uh, neither of them give us a playable experience. So this is definitely not a setting that I would use when playing this game. All right, so now I've enabled uh, DLSS and XSS on quality to see if we can hit that 60 frames per second. Now I test on these settings because I don't think it's worth it to go more aggressive on the upscaling at 1080p because uh, the game just starts to look a lot more fuzzy, a lot more blurry. And uh, even the DLSS quality at 1080p is not ideal. I just wanted to see if we can actually hit 60 frames per second here when ray tracing is enabled. And unfortunately, both of these GPUs fall short with the Arc GPU once again being slightly ahead of the 3060. So in our quest to get 60 frames per second, I moved uh, the upscaler up to performance mode on both and uh, neither of them are still able to hit a solid 60 frames per second. Although it does come close, I, I, once again, I wouldn't uh, play like this or advise you play like this. At this point, just disable ray tracing because at this point you are really sacrificing a lot of uh, visual fidelity just for nicer lighting and reflections. I'm not saying that ray tracing doesn't look good, but uh, when you have these class GPUs it's uh, best just left disabled. All right, now we get to The Last of Us Part 1. So once again, the Arc GPU here is suffering quite a lot when compared to the RX 3060. We saw this in the RX 6600 XT video as well. 
Both the RX 6600 XT and the 3060 outperform the ARC GPU by quite a margin in this game. Not sure exactly why that is, just have a look at the frame time graph there on the Intel side. There's these periodic uh, stutters. I tested this in my 12700K system as well and the results were identical. So I'm inclined to believe this is probably driver related. Lowering the preset down to medium doesn't help that much either. You can still see those periodic stutters there and the ARC GPU is still not able to hit 60 frames per second where the 3060 is well above it at this point. Now this is definitely not a VRAM issue because the 6600 XD also only has 8 gigabytes of VRAM and it doesn't happen on this GPU. And also when I tested at 1440p Ultra and at 4K on the ARC GPU, these uh, periodic stutters actually went away. It didn't give us a playable experience at those settings, obviously. So for now, this game is broken on the ARC A750. All right, so moving on to Counter-Strike. And here, once again, I am playing against Global Elite players. So if I do suck, that's the reason why. These results can't really be compared to each other because this is a bot match, a death match. So it keeps on changing. There is a built-in benchmark for counter-strike but it does not really reflect real world performance and neither does this really because this is a bot match and it uh, puts additional load on the cpu which is uh, pretty evident in the one percent and 0.1 percent lows you don't really see that when actually playing an online game that said the benchmark run is not identical i'm obviously not able to reproduce the benchmark run 100 percent but it does give you an idea of what these two gpus actually are capable of in counter-strike global offensive it is also worth it to note that the performance does uh, get a lot better the one percent zero point one percent lows in uh, particular the more you play as i said the bot matches are a little bit more heavy on the cpu I can't really play an online deathmatch because uh, I've actually gotten some warnings when I use MSI Afterburner in official online matches as it sees it as a third party software and it's trying to ban me for hacking. And the main reason why I actually included uh, CSGO is because Arc GPUs used to suffer quite a lot in this particular game but that has been resolved with a driver updates. Right next up we've got Dead Island 2 and here you can see that the RDX 3060 is slightly faster than the ARC GPU. Not that much, maybe around 10 to 12% but both give a pretty high refresh rate experiences at uh, these settings. This is an Unreal Engine 4 game so there is quite a lot of traversal stutter and that actually impacts the lows quite significantly but uh, that being said these GPUs uh, do a very good job at 1080p you'd be hard pressed to actually notice a difference when playing this game and if you have a 144 hertz panel both these gpus are perfectly capable of maxing that out all right and lastly we come to diablo now this is once again the exact same dungeon the layout changes a little bit between runs so it's not identical but i just want you to have a look at the stuttering on the intel arc gpu here as soon as combat commences the frame rates are pretty much uh, the same right not not a lot of differences between the two but just look at the stuttering there on the right hand side as soon as the combat commences on the 3060 that doesn't happen on the 6600 xt it also happened where we were sitting with the one percent and 0.1 percent lows of six and three frames per second respectively and uh, here you can see the arc gpu is really struggling when there's a lot of combat on the screen now this is not because we are vram limited but this game does seem to perform better when there is more vram available digital foundry also did a video on this and even though the vram is not being maxed out there's a very big benefit to having more vram all right now with all that said and done i'd personally still recommend the rdx 3060 even though it is a little bit more expensive it does have the more mature drivers all right thank you guys for watching hope you enjoyed this video if you did hit that like button hit that subscribe button and as always we hope to see you in the next one